do the introductions. All right, so let's get started. Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, and this is our second meetup for the Teal programming language, the typed dialect of Lua. I'm, I'm still trying to find like how we can best describe it in short terms. Like we were talking about like the minimalistic dialect of Lua, you know, and the type dialect of Lua, like it's a programming language of its own, like how to uh, better describe it, but here we are. Uh, that's one of the things that I uh, talk about in the, at the Fosden talk that I'm going to give this um, weekend, and uh, we'll talk a bit more about that later. And so, yeah, uh, we've got some, like, we're trying a different time this time. We're doing this two hours earlier than last time um, in order to accommodate different time zones. Uh, we've had folks uh, from China mentioning that last time it was like 2 a.m. for them, so that would make it difficult to join. So this time, We've tried to slide it over like two hours back, so it's, it's still not ideal, it's midnight. Uh, I don't know if anyone's in China uh, who's joined. Um, hey, we have, we have, hey, hi, welcome. Uh, I see Young Lee. So um, yeah, so now this is, this is 8 a.m. in the US West Coast and midnight in China, so that tries to cover most of the world. It's always impossible to make a good time for everybody, but we're trying our best. Um, so yeah, I think uh, we've had quite some different uh, folks from last time. And so should we do a quick round of intros? If anyone wants to, to unmute, say hello, say like, you know, their name and what's their interest. Like, um, yeah, I, I, I will, I'll start, I'm Hisham. I created Teal and um, and uh, well, I'm just happy to have you have you all here. And, and so uh, um, I'll, I'll hand it over to Timur, who is our, our gracefully our, our, our host, because he's offering the, the, the hosting for this Zoom session. Yeah, sort of host, but well, uh, I, I do nothing here. <laughs> That's very, uh, very interesting approach to host anything. Okay, in any case, uh, I, I am quite new to all the things uh, Lua and Teal, and we still are not doing very much uh, on a Teal front, just reluctantly waiting for some uh, new features like object orient orientation and uh, infrastructure ready for LDOC replacement ev eventually. Uh, uh, but at least, uh, uh, we spread uh, news about all this stuff. That's why two uh, colleagues from Toronto team are already there. Uh, 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 Vlad is already doing something until I'm not sure about Igor, but I'll probably uh, uh, doing something. Oh, no, I, I'm just playing with the kid. Yeah, but okay, I like so, it. Yeah. So, so Vlad is your turn. <laughs> Oh, okay, nice. Uh, yeah, th um, hello to all. Uh, I'm Vlad. Yeah, I'm currently from the Toronto team. I'm for five years. I uh, develop applications in Lua inside Nginx and inside the Toronto memory database. And uh, when I found Teal, I was whoa. Uh, I've already seen uh, TypeScript, and it's translated to Lua, and it is not so good. And when I saw Teal, I, I was encouraged to, to check it, to try it inside the Toronto, and I found uh, some bugs and some uh, strange behaviors. I, I'm glad that I can join to you here and maybe discuss some of uh, these uh, decisions that you made in the language. And uh, uh, can we just uh, add some issues or maybe change uh, roadmap of the language in, in any way to uh, ease integration of Teal inside uh, such platforms as Nginx and maybe Radius and maybe Toronto. It would be nice. Thank you. I Igor? Uh, okay. Uh, I also work on, work on Toronto, uh, especially on uh, logic integration. Uh, before it, I worked uh, on Lua Vela, if someone knows what is, it is. Uh, uh, I didn't try uh, till 
uh, yet, but uh, uh, Timur invited me to attend this meetup, so I think I. Uh, because sooner or later, you start... Vlad would need some uh, kernel support from Toronto <laughs> kernel. That's why yeah, maybe, yeah. I will ask maybe, Igor to help maybe, us. <laughs> maybe sometime I'll, I'll come to Igor and uh, okay, let's just integrate Teal into the Toronto and uh, our customers and users will use it as the maybe secondary language. Yeah, because, we're just waiting uh, for um, a proper moment. Yeah. I'm yeah. mostly interested in uh, the inside part of Teal. Uh, than uh, to write in it, but uh, I understand that without writing the language, you can't uh, figure out how it should be done inside. So, try it in a, in a jiffy. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, uh, I guess Jan Lee can proceed. Yeah. Uh... Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, we replaced our Lua could, uh, Lua could to Teal uh, about uh, several months ago because we found that uh, Lua is not easy for some other developers to maintain and to find bugs. Mm, we, maybe we use the Teal not like the Golan. We want to use Teal like the Gula. We introduced many new types like the error. And so, so the engine, so um, the developer in our team can write Gola and Teal at the same time because the, the, the engine is in Gola and the plugin is in Teal. Okay. This is the, this is this is awesome. So uh, so uh, you so you are using Teal in in production now. Uh, yes, I think we have a huge Teal code base now, and uh, um, when the Teal have a new release, I will try to use the Teal in our code base to find some missing bugs. Oh, that's 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 super cool. That's awesome. You you are you are virus defender on on GitHub. Is that? Uh... Um, yes, we are building a server security product. We will install our product to the web server or the uh, machines with other operating systems. It can detect the hacker or the virus or the uh, cracker or some um, something that will harm your server security. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I see. Yeah, I see. I see your. I see your name in in the Gitter chat. Yes, you are the the virus defender username on on GitHub. So uh, yeah, so I remember when you mentioned that you had. You had more lines of teal code written than the teal compiler already. So, so this is this is super encouraging. Like it's it's awesome to see like early adoption, like Absolutely this. Absolutely fascinating. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, uh, who el who else is in? Who would like to introduce themselves? I don't want to put anyone on the spot and and force them in. But so, if anyone wants to unmute and say hello. Well, I can. Announce myself. My name is Domingo. I'm from Spain, and uh, uh, my main projects connected to this more or less is LGS and LGS JIT, and they send some uh, pull requests or bug reports for Q some time ago, and uh, I am. Uh, uh, receiving the notification, I see a lot of movement there, and I stopped for a while because I saw that uh, a lot of corner cases appear since then. And we stay uh, aside, looking at it, waiting for it somehow stabilized to look again uh, about it. And in my point of view, ideally, in the end, if you could add this functionality inside the, the C Lua code itself lot of code that you are actually 
you are actually doing right now, like the parser, the lexer, all these things is already done. So you'll be faster because the last time, at that time that I was looking for, uh, uh, parsing the queue uh, itself, I have an iSet laptop, was already having a, a, a lag, something like, uh, let's say five seconds, 10 seconds, something like that. It's, it's I could perceive that when I try to compile, uh, pass, compile Q to run in Lua, it has a lag, has a delay. So it's, it's starting to get heavy. And for uh, a bigger uh, source code, uh, source code will be start feeling a bit, you will be in the, in the way of developing in the, in the daily basis. But, but it, it's a nice approach uh, anyway. And, it, uh, and it, that's it. Well, if it's someone, had some question after that, I can say, well, let's other people talk, so also. Well, maybe I could go next. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so hi, I'm Dial. I'm from Spain as well. Uh, and I guess I'm just a personal developer. I've been using Lua for about four years. And I've started, you know, using Teal re recently for my projects. I didn't do anything too important. It's just more like personal projects and tool for the Lua community. Um, so yeah, I'm just really interested in seeing how the language turns out. I have a lot of interest in it and I would like to, well, I don't know, maybe give some input on how could this go, my use cases or what I think, and generally just help out. Um. Awesome, great, great to see you here. Great to see faces and, or, and names that I have seen uh, uh, in, our, in our Gitter chat. And one other thing, this week, uh, because of FOSDEM, I started using uh, the matrix, the centralized chat network, because it's what FOSDEM is using for its communication. So you can access that using the Element web uh, um, mobile client or the, or the web chat. And it has a uh, Gitter, uh, bridge integration, which works really well. So, uh, so the Teal community chat is also available on Matrix. So, uh, if you're using that, uh, we have the link in the TL repo. So, uh, so it's um, it's a really cool way to you know uh, to interact with with the community. So, I'm happy to see some of the, the names from the community. I see that uh, Corey said. Uh, Hello from the from the Zoom chat as well. So it's great to that, that's Euclidean Ace on uh, on GitHub, who's done a lot of stuff in the language and in the tooling. And uh, so uh, yeah, pre pre pretty much you know pretty much like uh, a member of the team now. And uh, super glad to have you here and and, and join joining the conversation. And uh, Corey says, no mic, uh, no microphone, sadly, but hi, everyone. And uh, yeah, so anyone else wants to uh, introduce themselves? Etienne? Um, well, <laughs> uh, Tian says I haven't done anything, so I'm shy just here to show support. Ah, uh, uh, that's that's great. It's great to have you, uh, to have, to have your support. Like for those who don't know, Tian has been like active in the in the Lua community for for uh, uh, a long time now, and and she developed the, the Sailor web web framework back in the day, and she organized uh, Lua Conf in Rio, which was an amazing event, and uh, I. I, I I, I, I sort of have uh, all my past job from, from that event. Uh, so uh, I ended up working with the folks who I met at that event. So uh, <laughs> I thank Etienne for that too. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's great to, to see uh, uh, those familiar faces um, here as well and, and get to know the new ones. So um, yeah, if, okay, if we've gone through all the introductions, so I've taken I've taken some some notes. Um, uh, yeah, Etienne said you haven't done anything in the community for a long time. No, said so. Yeah, so we'll 
now you can say you have like tomorrow you can say what have you done the little community well i've i've joined the teal meetup yesterday so that's uh <laughs> that's that that's a start i hope to get you excited about it again um so yeah i took some notes on the some of the comments that folks made and i think are, are great conversation starters um so um and i also had some notes on, on topics we could go through and yeah i'll i'll, I'll first of all, i'll go through uh, domingo's comment on maybe integrating with the lua c code base and the overall speed of the compiler um in the past couple of months um uh for for, for those of you who don't know i i i I left uh, Kong early in, in December, who I was uh, working for the past uh, three and a half years. And I'm now in a sort of, of sabbatical moment right now, uh, giving myself a break in the middle of this pandemic. But I ended up just getting ex super excited about, about Teal and, and putting most of my time on it for the past two months. So all that activity you have seen recently has a lot to do with that. And, um, and in, the, in that period, like very recently, we, I've, I've put in some effort at uh, speeding up the compiler. I've never observed like five second uh, delays, even in the early days. But yeah, but even like, even like half a second is kind of too much. And uh, so I've been doing lots of experiments with uh, using an LPEG based parser, uh, Lexer, rather I didn't re-implement the parser. Um, and uh, fiddling with the LuaJIT uh, flags and all of that. And I have seen some significant improvements. And now, uh, now the, like the busted test suite right now, it runs in like 1.4 seconds on my machine. And uh, the Teal, Teal can compile itself now on my machine in like 0 0.3 seconds, 0 0.15 if it's running on LuaJIT. So uh, I, keep, I try to keep track, like I, I run the tests with LuaJIT and I run the CLI with Lua 5.4. So I'm kind of using both at the same time just to keep testing. And yes, it, it would be a lot faster if it was made with in, with in C, with Lua C, or, or even if we were using like a C-based, C-generated code base, like, like tree sitter parser generator. Uh, but one of the goals which I have seen interest in the community and people saying like, please don't change this. It's the fact that Teal is written in pure Lua and has zero dependencies. Uh, like the Teal compiler is like one Lua file, tl.lua. It's actually tl.tl, which you can compile and generate tl.lua. And that one file, it works with all Lua versions. It has no dependencies of its own. So the idea is that you can embed that in any Lua project. Like if you have a Lua game and you wanna do a module in Teal, you should be able to do that. And are you know so so uh, I'm I'm curious to hear about people's thoughts on integrating with different environments such as Toronto and and others because the the idea is that Teal wants to be you know as nice as possible for embedding because this is one of the things that Lua is super good at right it's it's designed for embedding into like a C application and so Teal is designed for embedding into on top of Lua. Right, so the, the compiler is like a, a, a teal to Lua transpiler. It also has the package loader. So if you load it into the package loader, require becomes teal aware automatically. So you can require .tl files. And uh, so, so, so generally that's, that's how it works. The, the prize for that is that we have to have a parser written in pure Lua and which will always be slower than a parser written in a, a than a parser written in C, right? It could, I mean, face it could be made faster maybe if we start like optimizing for Lua JIT. It could get a little faster. But then again, I don't think it's really uh, uh, worth it even because like generally, like for, for the sizes of modules, uh, TL.TL is kind of, because of the bootstrap, it's like one huge module and generally not the way you do. Like for regular size Lua modules, uh, right now, I think, you know, loading a TL file is pretty instant. So uh, I, I'd like to hear from the community, like if it's, is anyone who's, who is using TL feeling that it is slow right now? Or how, or how, how does the speed feel like? It looks like Yank uh, could say yes, because well, she's using it very, 
uh, actually, I didn't notice some uh, sl slowness in uh, Intel because uh, when you start your application, you firstly require all your modules and they all cached inside the package dot loaded. And uh, after that, you do, did, do not need to uh, parse code again. So I think it's okay to uh, sleep for application on the bootstrap on the start for some seconds and then uh, works pretty fast. And furthermore, we are okay if it would require logic. Uh, yeah, no, definitely it's... okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, yeah, I also, uh, I think uh, Igor, you mentioned working on Lua Vela. I have never ran Lua Vela myself. How compatible it is with, uh, with Lua right now? Uh, so it's originally the fork of Logit, and uh, uh, we didn't change the parser, so it's the same as uh, in Logit. Uh, there are new built-ins that are uh, grouped in a separate uh, namespace uh, UGIT. So uh, if I, I guess you you can use it uh, like a drop-in replacement for logic. Oh, awesome! But so I it's guess it's it, it's much closer. We uh, uh, we want to think uh, that it's much closer to Lua than to logic, considering the split. So. There are no features from uh, 2.1 branch. Uh, yes, this was to mention that uh, it was originally forked from uh, 2.0 version of right. Logit. There are no 64-bit uh, uh, pointer hack, uh, but they are implemented uh, the natural way. Uh, and uh, it's only x86 now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I doubt there would be port in the nearest future for other architectures. So okay, right, yeah. So, so that that probably like uh, from what I'm hearing, I would I probably guess that you could take teal code and you know compile it to Lua, and it would work on Lua Vela with no problems, as an as an additional possible target, which is which is great news. That's that's one of the things that I've been trying. I have not advertised this like very much as a public role too much, but uh, if you have been paying attention, one of the things that I've been taking care of is to trying to make the teal code sort of like as agnostic as I can regarding the different Lua versions at the bottom. So now, because we have a, a compiler pass in front, there are things that are missing in LuaJIT that we can add in teal and compile and generate a LuaJIT compatible code. For example, the the Lua 5.3 bitwise operators, you know, like shift left, shift right, and those kinds of things. Uh, we uh, integrated the vision, you know, that, for example, for if you're running a Lua JIT, that will generate math.floor and then a regular division, and you'll get the same output. So, um, so, so Teal kind of like, it, it's not the number one goal, but it tries to do it like the little bit that it can in order to address the 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 fragmentation of of the of the Lua ecosystem, in that sense, right? So uh, um, the the idea is that you know, say for things like, you know, like oh, integer precision. Of course, if you're running on five three, you will have sixty four bit precision in your in your integer calculations. But if you're running with uh, with five one, you, you you or logit, you get different precision. But this is like. If you're running C compiler on a 32-bit machine or a 64-bit machine, then the int type, you know, they can like can have a different size. So it's kind of, it's it's sort of the same thing, but generally it's possible because for a long time when I was working on writing on Lua rocks, I made one single code base that would run on 5.1, 5.2, and 5.3. So I know it's possible. So some of those tricks that I've learned, I, I've put on the the on the TO compiler to make sure that it generates code for all the versions. So um, that's that's one thing that uh, Corey mentions also in, in the chat that you, you can reconfigure the size of Lua integer and even in a 64-bit machine or something, you can change the size of. So basically even the Lua number has not a guaranteed size. 
So just assume that the Lua number and the teal number also doesn't have a guaranteed size, right? Um, and uh, if your code doesn't care about that, it can run on any version. Uh, one, one thing that I wanted to mention, uh, only yesterday or before yesterday, I saw an announcement for Roblox about uh, they are looking for people to work with them. And I saw looking in their website, they have what they call Luau, that it has static type checking. And I saw, well, this is something, because one of the main points of uh, Q is static type checking somehow. And they already have, but they could not find the source code for it. They have a documentation in one place. And I went to the website, I didn't saw even to download a binary to see yeah. what they look it's, like. It's, it's, I, not I, a, it's not open source. Yeah, but even binary, if it's not open source, but you could download the binary to, to test, I could not find. Yeah, it's part of Roblox. So yeah, for, 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 those, for those who are not familiar, for how Roblox is an environment for, for playing and uh, producing games uh, based on Lua. And now they have forked into their proprietary dialect of Lua that does add static types. So uh, in that sense, it is similar to Teal, but it's a, it's a, it's a closed project that only works in the Roblox environment and, uh, and it's closed source. So, yeah, but even there, uh, I think that's a good idea to at least to see the documentation because probably some corner case they already run on that, on them and it was solved somehow. So for some corner case, maybe can get some uh, uh, ideas from their documentation. Uh, yes, um, yeah, I, ha I have looked at I have looked at their documentation. In, in fact, uh, they have sent me. So I I, ha I have talked to the to the Roblox team uh about this so uh we, we we don't keep in like close contact or anything like this is just like a brief conversation about this so i am i'm, I'm aware of 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 their project they are aware of teal and uh yeah we 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 generally hit the same corner cases and uh we are i well if if, if they ever come up, come around to embracing open source we are here and we would love to get their their input as well and who knows? Maybe, maybe at maybe at some time they might even join the meetup and exchange ideas with us. If yeah, at least, if not, if not the code. Right. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Another note I took from from the interest was I think uh, Vladislav, you, you mentioned that you noticed some weird behaviors uh, in Teal. I'm I'm curious about those. And of yeah. course, you're very welcome to oh. open issues and discuss them. As well. Uh, yeah, because I, I, I do not want to duplicate some issues and I try to check chat and uh, search them on the GitHub. And yeah, uh, one of the issue was, uh, uh, you know, I'm checking inside the large container. I just opened the new issue with the reproducer uh, of the last version until and actually uh, well, conversation started about Niels and Niels inside functions. Uh, that was unexpected for me when I just write some function and uh, 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 which uh, must accept some arguments and uh, do not pass anything to the function. Maybe it's okay when I maybe write some nil uh, comma nil, but that's uh, unusual when I just write some and till does not uh, stop me. Uh, do, do nothing for it. And I think that's uh, not what I want from the type of language. I want that to a language to check that I pass some arguments. Maybe they can be nil, they can be nullable, but I, I need to check that. Because in Lua, in uh, pure Lua, we always know, do we have some arguments on the Lua stack or we don't? We, we can uh, distinguish these situations, nils and no values. And moreover, uh, when we talk about LDOC, uh, that's uh, Lua documentation, uh, it also parses uh, the code and uh, can uh, hit the note to the uh, developer that he, that the developer missed some arguments, so pass some arguments to the function. That's my uh, main issue for now. Uh, yeah, in that case, we have some great news because we currently have a pull request, uh, number 366, that, uh, where is it? My screen share. 
if I share screen, I hope there's nothing else messy in my screen. Yeah, can you see my screen? Yes. Yep. So, yeah, so the question of Neil, I think it's worth spending a couple, like spending a minute discussing this because there are two conversations going and they are related about this. One is about having strict null checks as in TypeScript. And that is a long conversation because it has lots of difficulties for integrating with a dynamically typed language. And uh, so let's just leave it at that, like full, like, you know, Rust style, Haskell style, like optional typing, you know, was where you can trace and detect every use of nil in a program is pretty hard. But what Vladislav has asked for, which is a lot like easier to implement in the end, already gives you a lot of bang for the buck is this, like, which is check for arity, which is just like in function calls and function returns, checking the number of things you've passed. Like, doesn't matter if they're nil or not, which is just what he was talking about. No problem if you pass an explicit nil, but you just want to, the compiler to catch it if you forget to pass an argument, right? Yeah, that's so, actually what I want, yes. Yes, this is this is what the the this is what the PR currently does. Right now, we're putting a question mark in the optional arguments. They're in the arguments to indicate argument arity and not in the type to avoid confusing with ah, oh, this is like optional number types, like because this is not optional typing. This is just optional arity. This is just like number of arguments. So it in, so it does implement that. Um, so the, the 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 PR is here. And uh, I, have, I have not merged it yet because once, once you merge it, the compiler gets stricter and a lot of things that currently pass will start failing because if we, like, if we go to, to the diff probably, uh, uh, where it's like the diff for TL, I have to put like lots of question marks in the TL compiler itself, right? So that it stops uh, complaining about, about things. But so yeah. does it work in the way similar as C++ optional arguments? Uh, but uh, uh, now that you mentioned it, why not put default values? Google doesn't have default value, but putting default value, I think that you cover this case. And it also will have something extra that you have a default value <coughs> for something that you, you already know beforehand. I think that's better than only this uh, question mark. Uh, actually, maybe I, I will uh, explain to you some example. For example, when you have a module and you have a method inside this module and uh, or maybe you have a class and the object of this class and you have a method and you call it on the uh, instant, instantiated object, then you need to pass some argument to the method. Now, TIL does not validate a variety of the arguments. So uh, uh, when you do not have default value, when you uh, explicitly require the argument of the uh, parameter of the of the function, uh, you, you 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 don't you can't solve this uh, having default values. You need to add in a set function, a set function with an error, and check it, it inside runtime. But we need uh, type it languages uh, to avoid runtime checking. So maybe uh, this question marks or something like that is uh, necessary for us. That's a, that, 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 that's a good point. That's a great explanation why, why they're different from having default values. Um, default values are, uh, um, the, the default values on themselves would be like, a, 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 they, they are like many languages have them. Um, I have not thought about adding them uh, because generally I'm trying to not, I'm, I'm trying to play it safe in, in the regarding like the additions to the language and not invent too much stuff and add like, oh, here's like something extra on top of Lua and more like focusing on the typing aspects because for example, for default values, uh, you know, like you would essentially have to generate code like if da -da -da is nil, then, you know, you would have to make an assignment and generate code and, in, and inject that into the function. That's how the the, the source to source compiler will have to implement default values. It's easy, but it's, it's yet again, you know, it's, it starts, uh, TL starts to become less of a one-to-one -one translation in terms of that. For example, default values would start having a performance impact because you have an if checking every time that well, you know. Well, why, why do you need that? Because in, for example, 
I mainly use a uh, skiro. I have a fork of skiro called that I call skiro, that is with the based on Lua, but with the JavaScript or C plus plus C Java uh, C C style of syntax. And they have the default value. And default value is only in the definition of the function. When you parse it, you have there if there is a default value. And when you are uh, calling a function, you already have the is in definition is only this parameter is missing the default value is there that is you put there there is no is i don't think that there is performance dependent on that because it's only one reference in the in the function definition this parameter has a default value is not is missing has a default value the default value go there no it's an error in yeah, my I, point of view yes that that would uh yes that would work if the entire program like the whole world was done in teal but if you're writing teal to uh expose to generate a lua module that will be used by the lua side then the lua side would expect well the contract for this function says it has a default value i'm calling it from lua i'm not giving it that value i want the value to show okay. up right so that that okay. that would that would have an effect so um yeah, so uh, I see Vladislav is asking on the chat, like giving an example, like for if us, yeah, like that there are questions about, about uh, nils and, and default values. So yeah, so the, the, the short answer is that, yeah, there are no plans for adding default values now. And uh, yeah, and I, I know they can be convenient, but that it's, it's, it's not something that we're planning, but yes, the, the question mark for optional arguments for, Arity checks explicitly, nothing specific about nil uh, is something that we're, we're, we're planning to add. And it's, it's good feedback to hear that, that, that people want it. So and just the question mark, And the question mark will work, you, uh, work like in default values. You, co you could not have a, a question mark in the middle of the parameter list. No, Speaking. no, the, the, the PR only allows in the, in the end. In the end, okay. Yes. Okay. Um, so yeah, so, so, so this is something that's, that's coming up. I have not like merged it yet. Overall, the initial impressions seem positive, but I don't, uh, yeah, but I'm, I am aware that when we merge this, lots of things like that's something that I would like is, is there concerns? Cause if we, if we merge this, a lot of things that currently pass will start giving errors and you have to go back to your functions and put the question marks. Where, where the parameters are really optional. Because uh, if, uh, well, if I remember, I, I'm not sure if in the queue itself, but it's common Lua to try to imitate default value is after the, the first or second line of the function is test if, I, if parameter is new, then parameter is some, some value. So like you say, the if test yeah. uh, inside the function, this is, Several people try to imitate this with this uh, syntax, and it, it, for me, it's, it's a bit cumbersome. But okay, but I'm not yeah. the owner of the project. I know this, but it's, it's your, your thing. And well, only to mention one thing, because when I, I reported uh, some problems in the past, when I tried to convert it to LJS, is about the shadow variables. Q is warning about the shadowing variables or not yet? Or do uh, you plan to have that? Currently, we have warnings. If you if you already clear the variable more than once in the same block, it yes. Will... Okay. Yes. Cur currently, it, currently it is a warning because no, it's it's valid. It's it's valid Lua, right? But it's uh, yeah. But it's but it's, it's, but it's, some, it's, but it's something that Lua check generally complains about so now we have since we have a compiler pass uh yeah, because this is, a, is 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 something that is easy to introduce in bugs without noticing with this because I, I when i i did this lgs and i did the lgs git when i convert the lua git i found the one bug in the lua git itself in the one Piece of Lua that do the check for the MIPS, where in, in a, a function that was not too big, but there is several uh, variable declarations, and inside uh, a loop, 
micro radicalia are variable that is have outside and the shadow completely the variable that was the main variable that was using for decision and that decision for MIP it was exclusively for MIP it was uh, fault and why I did the conversion because I put that as explicit error no warning is an error and I sent it I saw that and I tried to fix because I need when I convert to LJS I need to go and fix all these things because in my view, for me, I so I rename the variables or I change some somehow to have it out. When I try to fix the code in Logit, I noticed that the, the code was fault. And when I did it with the other projects to test if in my because I, I wrote a, a, a lecture parser with the uh, lemon uh, parser from SQLite to convert from Lua to LJS, and it works more or less very nice so i to test it i converted several projects and the, one of the things is shadow values and the, in some of them the shadow value was a font of a bug but because the rule yeah. do not complain people do not uh, see that as uh, that bug yeah but but in the Lua, in the Lua world shadow variables have been caught by uh, lua check for a long time so it's been many years since i've had problems with 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 variable shadowing uh, in lua because of lua check and yes, uh, so rest assured that nowadays uh, TL also uh, checks and reports about uh, shadow variables. And uh, yeah, thanks for uh, um, uh, Corey's work actually uh, adding uh, the warning system. So um, so yeah, this is this is this is something that's not something to be to be concerned about. Um, so let's see. I had some other notes. Uh, yeah, I have some other notes in here. Uh, we are, we have, I, I generally, I'm trying to keep these uh, meetups at a one hour mark. So um, we are now at 48 and on, on my clock. So have a, we have another 10 minutes or so. And okay, so some things I would, I would like to uh, briefly talk about is, and well, new release, we've had a lot of stuff uh, added since the last time. I think we are in shape for, let's see if we, let me, let me quickly share screen just so we can just see if I, if I spot anything. The font's probably too small, but yeah, so like since the last release, we've had a lot of stuff merged in. This is the current state of master. And this is the TL types branch uh that i've been working on since and um i think i think we can i think we can probably just do a new release now with the stuff that we currently have with about the current state of master big and then do a bigger release for uh for next time adding the tl types work and adding uh the cool stuff that's been in the works uh right now such as such as the, the optional Arity checks and um, and also some of the cool discussion that we uh, uh, have been doing around the TL command line driver. Um, so uh, we've had a tons of bug fixes and things like that uh, in. So um, hey, uh, it tends to say she's uh, dropping off. Uh, so uh, in the Zoom chat. So bye bye, Etienne. Um, so I think my plan is to try to get a release on, on out of master right now. I know that we have lots of stuff uh, in flight right now f with uh, with the, the, the with the CLI and with TL types and uh, with those other features. And then probably if we get to a point where we can get this TL types branch merged so that the other editor work can get in. Um, let me quickly explain what the TL types branch is for those who are not aware. There's something super cool that's happening right now at the, and the, in our Gitter slash matrix chat, which has to do with, uh, with editor integration, right? So TL types is the, the CLI command is kind of a showcase for the APIs that are provided by the, the, by the compiler itself. So the compiler now has in that branch has two new functions. One is get types which returns you a report of all of the types detected by the program 
like this is it's essentially extracting them from the ST and giving you a, a, a brief summary so that you don't have to run through the ST um, as a whole. And uh, symbols in scope that giving you a line and column position, it, it tells you uh, what all the names that are in scope in that position of the AST uh, with uh, their types as well. What's this for? This is for making ID integrations, right? Uh, so uh, Corey uh, has been uh, working on experimenting with the language server protocol, which is used by uh, things like Visual Studio Code and many other IDEs nowadays. And um, Patrick uh, has his VS Code Teal um, plugin, which is like a super cool and important thing that uh, gave us, like, I, I guess like it helps a lot with visibility, like uh, as uh, someone said in, 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 the, in the metric, in the, the chat, like, oh, Teal is looking like a real language now because nowadays I think like a language is not only a compiler, like the half of it is like the core language compiler. And, uh, you know, the other half really is that all the tooling, I think is just as important. And my, my area, my field is more like the, you know, the type checking and the compiler and all of that. And I'm super happy to see other folks stepping in and, and doing some amazing work on the, the side of the tooling. So yeah, so for, so now Patrick has been playing with the, that branch, the TL types and, and starting to get that information. So now we've have uh, hover to, to provide uh, type information and, and, and all of that in. So uh, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me do a quick demo of what I had because I, I, I have an integration like just for testing on my own text editor, which is not as cool as, as uh, what, what one question. Uh, do you actually can infer types for normal Lua code and suggest the types for uh, refactoring new uh, already existing Lua code or not yet? It's not, it's it's not the focus. We have some support for that, but it's but it's not the project focus right now because uh, it would be very heavy on inference, and I don't. And it would stray from, from being a minimalistic uh, uh, compiler. So yeah, so if you look right now, like this is, like this is, this is running on DIT, which is my own little console text editor. And this is using the information from the, the TL types branch. So yeah, last minute demo of new features. Uh, so now we can see that symbol list is an array of symbol. And you know, this like the other field, this gives us a number. Symbol list here is a number. If we go like, you know, up, upper is a variable that has T, which is a type and type has nominals, which is a map from string to types. So given a string, it gives you a type. So yeah, this is, so this is coming. And uh, this is uh, this kind of thing. Uh, ho hopefully, you know, uh, we, we also want, I think we can do, uh, I can jump here. This is a function from string to variable. If I press control D, it jumps to the definition. So if I go here, I can jump to the definition of this one. And I can jump back, you know, and, and jump in. So, uh, so this is kind of like IDE style integration that will be coming uh, available in, in future versions with, with the additions of, uh, that I've been making to the API of the core compiler so that uh, the other tools can, um, such as VS Code Teal and, and the language server uh, can start using it. So I'm super happy about it. Like I went like late into the night, like super excited coding, coding those things because, because of the feedback that I got in the chat from people using it, uh, the experimental branches and, and integrating it. So, uh, so yeah, so, so this, is, this, is, this is coming. Um, let's see if there's anything on, on Zoom chat. Uh, yeah, extra like for for VS Code Teal. Yes, it's it's. Yeah. I was super excited when it was like that was also like a super early addition in the project. Actually, because of uh, Teal, I, I I started to use VS Code because I, I wanted to try Teal somewhere and to study it in in some environment, and the VS Code was uh, quite good for it. And. Uh, Moreover, I have one question about Teal itself and how it, it is working with the records. 
uh, I mentioned that Atil always creates a separate table, Lua table for each record, even if uh, no code uses it. Uh, do we want to fix it, this somehow? Um, yeah, um, short version, uh, yes. Uh, long version, I think, uh, I think the fix is going to be a little different from may, what you may expect. <laughs> um, the, my plan right now, like we don't have an official roadmap document or anything. Maybe this is something that we could fix in the future, but uh, right now we're, we're developing things as we get the feedback. It's going very agile in that sense. Uh, so from, we have lots of discussions in that regard, and I understand that that behavior produces confusion. But if it did not generate the table, it would also generate confusion because we have those patterns where sometimes people do like prototype based OOP in, 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 in Lua and they expect the, the type to be a table. And sometimes they do sort of like class based where it's more abstract. And if you have static type, static kind of like C++, like uh, Java static fields, they want them to be in the class. So being in the class would mean being in that table. In the table, yeah. Right, so that's, so my, what I have in mind right now, of course, and this can change because, you know, depending on the discussions and how we, we together, we all like move on with our understanding. But my understanding right now is that I think records should continue to produce that table, but I think we should add abstract interfaces, which those, because they're not instantiable, because they're abstract and you cannot add things to it, then they're really abstract and you don't, you, you, you don't generate you don't generate code out of them and they don't uh, like leak into the generated code. So Yeah, I, I, I get the idea actually, but you can, you can uh, create record and then after that add some extra field and maybe use even set meta table inside some constructors, inside some new function and you get some actually uh, good behavior for default values of the objects of the class. You may uh, simulate the class programming in that way. That's strange, but it works. Uh, yes, I, um, yes, I, I think for an, another topic that was a long topic in our, our previous meetup was like what to do with object oriented programming. And we all agree that there are various different strange, but it works ways of doing object oriented programming in Lua, like basically, you know, fiddling with set meta table and all of that. One thing I mentioned in the Fosdem talk now, uh, spoiler alert, is that and and we've seen various discussions also in in the in the github issues and all of that was that everyone who i know who spends a long time thinking about this even from like the beginnings of type lua back in i think you know 2015 or or, or earlier when the the guys who i know from the Pukri university who worked on the type lua uh the phd thesis and all of that uh they since then, and even now recently, even like, like I think Corey was the most recent one, everyone seems to arrive at the same question that, you know, if we want to do a clean OOP model for a compiled language that generates Lua, you have to kind of do it by some sort of meta programming. And uh, I, I don't think this is like short term, but I think it's something that should come sometime this year, because I, I think this is the direction that we should go in which basically, you define a function, maybe like a Lua or a Teal function that tells the compiler, okay, when you see a class, this is, this is what you should generate. And this is something that whoever is building the infra for your application, right? To say like, maybe like you're creating your Tarantul integration and say like, this is how the Tarantul objects behave and I want my Teal classes to behave like that, right? And then the compiler runs that code and generates the correct types and, and all of that. So it's not, I know sometimes people get scared when we talk about meta programming is, I think the Zig language was, was very smart by just calling them like comp time, compile time functions, right? Uh, yeah, Corey's mentioned at the, the Zoom chat, partially arrived at, Corey says, I partially arrived at the conclusion because I think Zig implements compile type, type introspection and generation very nicely while still being a decently minimal language. Yes, exactly. So uh, yeah, because when you say like, this is just a function that you run when you're compiling and this tells you what to do, right? 
which is kind of what people do when they write their smart code that does the set meta table and all of that, right? It's very similar in that sense. It's a very Lua-like approach to do things. You do the crazy thing once, you tell Lua how to deal with it, or you tell Teal how to deal with it, and then it does it. And the rest of the code, the application itself, you know, generating the types, the classes, and all that, becomes clean code. And you just do that once, you know, and typically in a team, there's like, you know, someone takes care of that dirty part, pulls it under the rug, and then the, the, the rest runs cleanly. I think that's, uh, uh, I think that's a, a very Lua-like approach because I think, because one thing I've not noticed and I see that in TypeScript as well is that everyone will have some extra thing they want out of the type system. Like, and this could easily become a way from the language to grow forever. And, and when you do metaprogramming, you just say like, okay, here is the mechanism for you to uh, do your crazy big special behavior. And you add like a little function there, the compiler runs it for you and, and then it, uh, everything works. So uh, I, th I think at one point, once we have like the basics of the language down, like to a point where say like, okay, we're happy with what we have here and people start to asking for more things, then we say, okay, here's the metaprogramming support and you add your extra stuff in there. Uh, yeah, I actually, I absolutely agree with you and with all of your points, but can you explain for us uh, how should we use uh, typed meta tables? That's some confusing thing, and I do not understand how to use it in the right way. For example, for uh, dash dash index method, for index method, meta method, and a new index meta method, that's just what is it and how it is supposed to be used in uh, the programs? Uh, yeah, so right now we have, uh, yeah, that, that's one thing that was recently added. That was, that, that was asked for in the last, uh, the Christmas Teal meetup. Someone said, ah, oh, Teal doesn't have meta methods. And then I, I added it in January. So now we have meta method support. This is very recent, but it's in the latest version of the language. So we have meta method support and uh, now uh, you kind of like, because the meta method type is very, it's very dynamic. Now you sort of, you almost always have to add a cast when you're calling set meta, meta table function. But now you have the record type, the record definition you can it has a special like keyword. It's like a soft keyword meta method. And you say meta method uh, index or meta method, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and it will, uh, I, I, yeah, I, I think it's supporting all of the operators. I'm not sure about new index, I don't remember. But like in index, I think it should be working, right? In, in the sense that if you declare a record type and because right now there's no runtime checking that the meta table is actually set. This is up to you. You have to set yeah, that's the, okay. right? Yeah. That's but, good. But once you have the record and you say meta method index in it, if you try to index the, 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 an object of that type, it will respect you know, the, 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 the arguments of, of, the meta, of the meta method definition. I, I'm not sure uh, if in the tutorial MD we have anything with meta methods there, but we should have. Let me quick check. Uh, tutorial. Um, in the tutorial, we have yes. just a short uh, remark or short note about, yeah, we, we, we have it and uh, there is no idea how to use it actually. And uh, yeah, yeah, it. yeah. Right now there, there, there's, a, there's an example there in tutorial.md. If you look at that, like it, it uses uh, the call and add uh, meta methods. And if you give that a try and, you know, try to play with the index meta method, that should work just the same. And if, if new index is not working, let me know and I will, uh, and open an issue and, and maybe send a PR. Okay. <laughs> Even the PR, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but, it, but it's like, because if you, if you, because if you look for a meta method in the, in the source code to look around, you'll see like it's, it's, it's kind of, uh, it ended up being not a lot of code because it's, it's very, uh, uh, because we like, as, as I said, we don't do track that the meta tables are set, right? It's up to you. So generally just for the type checking of the records, the, the, if you, if you look for, for meta methods in the, in the, if you look for meta in the compiler source code, you will see it's not a lot of stuff. Um, 
so yeah um okay we're we're past the hour now and i don't want to hold people uh very much longer like especially we have uh yanglings in china it's already like past 1 a.m there and uh, uh and also um it's 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 nice to keep those focused and you know keep all of us looking for the next one um so final notes um well first of all we have well we have 11 people right now in in, in the chat that's uh that's that's awesome and uh so this weekend we're having uh fosdem fos den uh free and open source developers european meeting huge conference happening this weekend it's going to be virtual uh this time so um everything is going to be live streamed on uh europe europe i think around 10 a.m or so uh, i might have the link here yeah 10 50 uh, a.m uh, Brussels time. Uh, I will be presenting. Uh, the talk is pre-recorded, but the Q and A is going to be live. Um, the talk is going to be called "What's Next for Teal." It's essentially part three of the Teal trilogy because Teal essentially started as a Fosdem talk in 2019. I put the link on Zoom chat. Uh, there was a, a talk in, from Fosdem 2019, another of 2020, and this is the third one. So, um, which essentially chronicles the, the origins and development of the language and uh um yeah also um um one one thing that i would like us to to discuss in our chat or, and discussions we now have also we now have the github discussions enabled in in the tl repo uh is i'd like to hear your ideas on how we should do community outreach essentially like how do we find the Lugo programmers to let them know about teal um, for this one, I posted on like, for this talk, I, I, this meetup, I posted on, on the, our Gitter matrix, uh, chat and, uh, GitHub, our GitHub discussions, my own personal Twitter. And also I know there's a, a, a Lua telegram group. I just posted the kind of last minute there, uh, cause I just remembered about it right before the meeting. And if you have any other ideas, uh, of places to, uh, you know, talk to people about, uh, Talk to Lua well, people about. Um, maybe I know it's not very popular among programmers because you know security and the whole, but there's a pretty big-ish community on Discord for Lua, and also Moonscript and the sorts. So I think it would be worth uh, seeing if we could pr promote, I guess, a teal on the Lua Discord or maybe communicate with people on there. I'm a pretty active member, so. I, I, I think it would be worth checking out. That's, yeah, that, 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 that's, that's great. And that's, uh, uh, I, th I think one thing that's uh, also on us is to try to schedule the next meetup more in advance, earlier in advance, so, uh, so that we could do that. And uh, yeah, so, so I, I think at that point then, then uh, could, maybe you could help with uh, uh, spreading the word over there at the, at, at the Discord server then yeah that'd be amazing yeah cool uh yeah i'm thinking uh i'm thinking we should uh i'm i'm, I'm thinking of trying to to keep it like around the end of the month so for the next meetup uh what do you guys folks think i'm, I'm not sure if wednesday like i just picked wednesday kind of randomly the first time i don't know if this is the best date um for 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 folks but I would say uh, February 24th would be like my first guess as a, a, a date for, for the next meetup. Anyone has like opinions or suggestions on what would be the best kind of date if we were trying to settle on a regular, on a regular day of the week or even time? We've had- uh, I, think, uh, I think if you put this as like, um, issue or uh, I, I don't know because I, I'm hearing from uh, you by the GitHub issues so I'm, I'm hearing uh, watching uh, you so if you put the announce there and if you people as an issue if you say for me it's better if it, it, it would be in X day it would be better for me so depend of the number till there the people uh, giving opinions about the for them, it will be easier if it's X day. Maybe close to that date, you can have it if people interest on it to close new dates. 
you can see where, where the majority can happen to be there. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. One thing I noticed is yes, it's 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 always difficult because of, often you will have like what what I've had so far was that usually I have like you know maybe three or four people will reply and it's usually to say I can't this day. People won't like give their full calendar saying I am available. You know, this 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 day. They they generally if you propose one day they will say I I not available on that day. So sometimes that's that's difficult. But yeah, I I think. Uh, uh, for the first meetup, I did open a GitHub issue. For this time, I opened uh, uh, discussions. I think people who are subscribed to the issues also get the, the emails for the discussions as well. I think, that, like, I know that I often yeah. get confused because I just see the GitHub email and I don't know if it's an issue or a discussion. But <laughs> yeah, I also do not know about it. Yeah, when you subscribe to a repository, you would get uh, discussions uh, updates as well. Yeah. So yeah. So so that's so that's uh, what I'm gonna do. Let's let's try to schedule it far in advance this time and see what happens. And then you know, uh, bang for the, the the social media and and all of the the environments closer to the date to let people know. One idea that you asked before about how to spread the word about the tube, I tried with the LGS. It doesn't work so well, but at least it, it helped me to test LGS. It's maybe try to use a tool to run a normal source code for interesting projects in Lua or significant projects in Lua. And if you find errors using tool, even if don't convert anything, only pass the like the project to the tool and they announce this that they propose a bug fix for this project. Because you found with the teal something like something like that, I think that you make people aware that teal exists and is catching bugs in their own project. Yeah, that's yeah, that that, that, that that's interesting. I'm I'm sort of wary of having people start looking at teal as a linter rather than rather than a compiler in a language like to 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 run a plain Lua code. But but yeah, that's definitely a a, a, a cool idea. Uh, I see Vladislav in the Zoom chat is asking, please give a link to the Discord Lua community. So, uh, yeah, I will give me a minute. Yeah. So, and we're running past on time now. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give, I'll give it a minute so that, uh, Dell can, yeah, there's there we the, go. there's the discord link and, uh, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll put, I'll put that in the, when, when we upload this to YouTube, I will, I will post the, the, in the, in the description as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think uh, so. Yeah, so so at, at first, let's let's try to shoot for February twenty fourth at the same time, um, for for uh, for the next meeting, and I'll I'll open a disc uh, get have a discussion about it well in advance, and depending on the feedback we get there, we can reschedule, and uh, otherwise we'll we'll go with that, and we'll try to do like the last Wednesday of the month, something like that uh, each time, and. Um, and maybe, I don't know, because I received this um, email two days ago or today, uh, yesterday or today, it's a good idea to somehow have it, an email uh, sent to people the day before or in the day because I, I'm here because I received an email, I don't know from where, yesterday or today I'm not yeah yeah that's that, that yeah that, that that's that's usually right like for for meetups you have to remind people like the day before and on the day because it doesn't like it doesn't work if if you just like set a date one month in advance but it's also good to have some sort of planning so uh so yeah i'll i'll i will tr i'll try to do that and i'll take every help i can like i know that like the the, the fact that we have a discussions uh open and github was like also an ask for from the, 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 the folks in the community. So that this is very much like community driven. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's, uh, let, let's plan that for, for, for the next one. I think this, this one has been uh, great already and uh, we've had more attendance than, than, than last time even. So, and we also like from, from last time I've just looked, we had like over like 50 views on YouTube for, from the, for the first one. So that's like a, you know, that's, that's like a room pack of people. Like if you consider all the people who watch the meetup later after the, the, the live stream here on zoom. So, uh, yeah. So I, so I think, I think this is, this is great. Like, uh, it was, um, 
great catching up with 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 you all a uh, uh, great input great feedback and uh super happy with all of the stuff that's that's going on and the language all the stuff that um you know all the folks there in the chat like this little community that we're building uh around this project is is doing and i'm super looking forward for for the next steps and i'm sure we'll have great news uh in the next one so uh with this i think uh I think that's it for for this time and i thank once again everyone for 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 joining and i will um uh, i will do a quick edit of the intro and uh post this on youtube asap and uh post the links in all of the normal channels and in the chat and in discussions so uh if if anyone else has any other comments i think this is a wrap um thanks everyone everyone else is there any thank you all right thank you. good luck thanks. on first them <laughs> thanks oh. <laughs> <laughs> thanks uh all right yeah bye everyone bye. thank you bye